Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program with myself, Martin Blackham. It's your program from Israel. We look at the news, we have interviews from Israel, we have features from Israel, and in the studio today we have Avi Samuels from Shalva, and we're going to be talking about Hi, the work of fantastic work that you're doing. Thank you so much for coming into the studio and giving us your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And, um, you know, it's uh, very interesting because um, at the moment in Israel, as we come into the studio, there's the politics of the election, but there's also uh, the uh, story, this is from the Jerusalem Post, it says, Shalva ban to get its Eurovision moment after all. Um, the Shalva ban uh, is, was, I understand, was going through for the, there's a competition in Israel, and uh, the Jerusalem Post says the Shalva ban won't be competing at this year's Eurovision Song Contest. However, thanks to Israel's national broadcaster can it will be appearing as an interval act during the show which will be held live in Tel Aviv the Shalva band became an audience favorite in the popular Israeli television show Rising Star winning a 91 percent approval rating in their audition and progressed rapidly through the TV shows competition rounds and uh, to talk about uh, Shalva and the Shalva band we have uh, Avi Samuels in the studio Avi is the uh, chairman of the Shalva Association so a lot of our, a lot of people at home will be asking, well, what is Shalva? So maybe you can explain a bit about the association and uh, a bit about the background. So if I if I connect to your opening statement, the Eurovision this year, the Eurovision's theme is Dare to Dream, and Shalva is all about Dare to Dream. Uh, of course, our band Dare to Dream and to give it a shot, and thank God made it. Uh, beautifully uh, along the program, uh, had an amazing journey, still in the middle of that journey, uh, of teaching people about the world of individuals with disabilities. We always talk at Chalva about thinking abilities and seeing possibilities. Uh, we never look at the disability. Chalva came along as a result of my, old, my family's experience, my parents' experience with my older brother Yossi. Yossi was born in Israel in 1977. My mother took him to the health center in Jerusalem to give him a DPT vaccine. And it turns out that those days uh, they had in Israel a damaged batch of vaccines and many babies were injured. We're talking mid 70s, mid late 70s, and uh, times were different and it took just too long to get this damaged batch off the shelves and too many babies were injured. So Yossi was one of them. He became blind and deaf, later on physically disabled, and life was flipped on its head for my parents. My family was suddenly dealing with a kid with a severe medical issue, and uh, after many years of challenging days, went to New York for five years for treatment, came back to Israel, a very long story, a lot of tears from my mother, and a promise in her heart that if ever God will help her Yossi, have a life of sort, any quality of life, she will dedicate her life helping other, as in her words, other mothers who are crying with her. Other families were dealing with a similar situation. They felt the lack of programs, the lack of support, and she knew exactly what she wanted to do. When Yossi was eight in Israel, a teacher who's deaf herself in the deaf school in Jerusalem managed to fingerspell the word shulchan, table, in Hebrew. This is a shin, vav, lamet, chet, nun. Every letter has a symbol based on English sign language. Someone invented Hebrew sign language, and he had what's called the Helen Keller moment, the Helen Keller breakthrough. He suddenly got it, and he, over a period of two years, she managed to teach him the 22 letters of alphabet of Hebrew alphabet, and he put together words and sentences and, you know, as my father always laughs till we had to, t we had to tell him at some point, Yossi, shut up. You know, it was, so he had a life. He opened up to the world and my mother felt it's payback time. Right. And she started dreaming on starting something to help other families. It took a few years. Started Chalva in 1990, started with one after-school program, helping six kids in the after-school hours when the kid comes home from school. And she knew as a mother that those hours were the most difficult hours. Very hard for a father to have a career, for a mother, siblings, 
the whole family pays a heavy price. And in many cases, it's just it, families break. It, it really right. has... There's so much pressure on the family. So much pressure on the family. It's not right. only about the child. With this one after-school program she started, where kids started coming from their school to our little center she opened, uh, the early days she used to still pick them up from their homes with a minivan she bought wow. and a rented duplex. And over the years, programs developed. All the programs at Chalmers that run 24-7 were all geared to the same solution, to give the kid what he needs to develop. He should have uh, maximize his potential, have a beautiful life, but at the same time, give the family that shoulder to lean on so right. that they could go on in life. So yeah. from one after-school program, a respite program, overnight program where kids sleep over one night a week to give the families that night off. Um, weekends, then we started with early age programs. Fast forward 30 years, almost 30 years, Shalva services today thousands of children. And, uh, you know, the programs run from birth through adulthood. Uh, so from the first moment a child is born or diagnosed with a disability, the family has shalva, the child has shalva. So it's care from, from being a baby to uh, a disabled person being an adult? Just all through life. Care. Wow. All through wow. life. Now there'll be people watching you watching and there's uh, people who are interested in, in um, doing something in their own country or saying, gosh, you know, this is so exciting what shalva are doing. Uh, are you able to help or I know it's a big thing to go into other countries, but are you able to give advice or? It's what shalva is doing these days. Shalva became really a model. We built the new center we're in now. We, we moved in two and a half years ago, and it took us 10 years to build. Wow. It's the largest and most advanced center in the world, and we of this kind. And uh, we are becoming that model where many, many delegations, groups, government officials, uh, parents, organizations, uh, really from all walks of life are coming to Shalva from all around the world. We do our best to teach, to help, to guide. Yours truly spends time in different countries, Mexico, Panama, Russia, uh, and uh, with partnerships and cooperation and trying to really spread the word and help realize that, hey, it's not rocket science. It's putting in the right programs and very simple programs that really create this solution and enable both the kid to develop and the family to have a life and for all of us as society to be a better society. Now, the, 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 in, the, in the Shalva Center, which is an amazing place, and if you get the chance to visit when you come to, it's in Jerusalem, if they get the chance to visit, it's a fantastic uh, center that you've got. Now, you've got lots of programs. You've got, I think you've got sports, haven't you? I've seen um, basketball and, um, Swimming, there's a swimming pool and uh, different therapies and you've developed, is that something you've, d you've developed yourself or is that uh, something you've learned from or how did that all happen? We knew building this new center that we're not building an institution. We're building right. a community center, a place where everybody who walks in doesn't feel like, hey, I came to visit these kids, let me volunteer with them, let me help them. Uh, kind of coming into their world, to a different world. The mission here was to build a place where everybody who walks in, who comes in, feels comfortable. So we have all the facilities for our kids and at the same time to integrate uh, society. We call it, it's not our term, it's a term used, but uh, it's what we use called reverse inclusion. Wow. It's much harder to take these kids and try to place them and put them into society and educate and teach. Much easier to have a platform, to have a center where society actually comes in. If it's people coming to use our coffee shop and it's a very high-end coffee shop, waiters are with disabilities, but it's a, an amazing coffee shop experience. Not You're not coming to be with them, you're coming to enjoy a meal. If it's right. with a business partner or with your family or an event, anything you do, you do it at our place. A 350 seat auditorium, a beautiful sports center, and uh, many other facilities where kids come and play. Our parks are fully accessible for kids with disabilities. We designed beautiful parks where hundreds of kids play together. And as my father, always says, you know, when kids play together in a park, 
you don't need to teach them later in life about accepting others and about right. it's, it's very natural to them. So, um, so it's really a it's really an amazing support that you're doing because I was going to ask one of the questions is that you know how do families in Israel cope with having a disabled child and this is a, a fantastic place where they can go and uh, take their child and. Um, one of the th one of the therapies you do, I think, is music, isn't it? You is that right? You do a, a music therapy. Yes. So, like other areas, music, if it's sports, art, uh, cooking, music is another area that we had an amazing, amazing music therapist that came in. So we had a music program at Chalva, but this young guy came in twelve years ago. And of course, we accepted him with open arms and he started working with kids who are really talented. We always, as I mentioned before, talk about abilities. These kids have a disability, but they have abilities. Some are talented in this area, some in that area, and some are very musical. So he, found, he formed this group of musical kids. He worked with them for many, many years, and he brought them to the level of really becoming a band and started to perform. It wasn't easy for them to perform at first, and they went through many, many ropes. And to see them today on stage performing and receiving so much love and being real musicians, you know, naturally, and I'm not trying to be the nice man, you know, but it's very natural uh, to see this as a gimmick. And right. perhaps it's true, oh, great, you know, here are these kids with disabilities, let's give them a shot. And what I'm so humbled with is really to see that there is no, uh, people are not cynical about it. I mm -hmm. see how much love they receive and I see how they're treated as musicians. Yes, there is the package. They come with the story. They come with a much greater message here. But at the end of the day, if they would not be real musicians, right. so it wouldn't really uh, go on and they wouldn't get to the stage they're at now. Um, and that's really the beauty of it. You know, if you give them a chance, yes, they have a disability, but they also have an amazing talent. And, and, and just one question before I go on to the band, because that's such an exciting thing and what we started off with. Um, when people go through the Shalva Center, do you put them into vocational training, for example, into work? Can they do that? So our, our, one of our main focuses these days is adults. Uh, we raise the kids from birth through adulthood, uh, the lack of services, lack of programs for youngsters, young adults and adults with disabilities is uh, very, very painful. And uh, Shalva's mission now is to take that area and develop it. So we have housing for individuals with disabilities, uh, but our main focus now is vocational training and uh, not only training them in typical stuff, packaging and other stuff that we know that these individuals could do. But in other areas, we just had a flowering course with the government. Others are doing now, we have a cookery course, and these individuals will be placed in kitchens doing whatever level of work they can do. Wow. I always take my brother Yossi as the example of this. First of all, he's, of course, our inspiration for everything. But Imagine Yossi with the palm of his hand. He has nothing. You know, he doesn't really have a reason to get out of bed in the morning. Doesn't see, doesn't hear, uh, can't even go to the bathroom on his own or get a glass of water. It's really dependent on someone to take him and help him and care for him. But he works. He goes once a week to the headquarters of the Route 6 Highway here in Israel, a company called Deich Eretz, and he all he can do is package like the easy passes, you know, they call it here Pascalim. He packages it. And when I turn to the CEO of that company who sits on Shalva's board, and first he, he did a favor. He said, I said, Avi, I said, Udi, please help Yossi, give him a job. He's dying for a job. And he gave him a job. And once I thanked him, I said, Udi, thanks. He said, don't thank me. I'm thanking you. And come look him, let's see him together at his job. And I was standing there for an hour observing him working, and he He's like a machine. He's doing his job wow. and, uh, you know, contributing to society in a place that others wouldn't do it. And the job is there to be done and Yossi is doing it. And what this does for Yossi is nothing else will do. It's his dignity. The right. first thing he will share with anyone who meets him 
is that, hey, I have a job. I work at the Echeretz. They gave him a nice fancy title with, uh, you know, uh, this card right. uh, with his title. And wow. it's on his belt at all times. When he goes to sleep at night, he takes it off his pants and puts it on his pajamas. Wow. It means everything for him that he's, he's a, you know, he's equal. That's he's part of society. He's a contributing member of society. It's, it's wonderful because, you know, Shalva is giving back dignity to so many different people. And I know that you're watching and you're saying, can I, how can they get involved? There's a website. Site. We've got it on the screen how you can um, donate to Shalva. Now, we're, um, we're very excited because we're going to have a quick look at uh, the music from the Shalva band. So we'll be right back in a minute after this. <laughs> Wow, 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 that was just absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Abby, for, you know, all the work you do with the band. I mean, absolutely amazing. They're going to be, um, in fact, you know, as, as I said at the beginning, they're going to be on the Eurovision anyway, even though because of Shabbat it was difficult for them to compete. They're going to be on, uh, I think, the semi-final. They're going to be a special appearance. The uh, television networks invited them, so you're going to be in for a treat if you get a chance to see that. And do look at their videos. I think the videos are on the website as well. Yes, you can on see the other website. Yeah. You can go to the Shalva website, and yes. there's other, other videos to see the band, and absolutely amazing. So you suppose you're going to be doing a world tour soon, you know, with them and go, go around and visit different countries, or? They, what do you think they, the future will uh, be for the band? You know, we always, uh, we don't plan. We didn't dream that this will be the result. We believed in them uh, and we gave it a try. And, you know, my father always says, you know, when opportunity comes, it's not a crime to fail, but not to try is not right. And uh, for us, you know, we're going through this journey with them and we're all very, very humbled. And uh, and they're a fantastic and, advert for Shalva, Abby. They're, um, you know, they're like uh, representing you. They are. I was thinking about that. You know, um, that they are ambassadors for Shalva. Really, they're they're really ambassadors for individuals with disabilities. The amount of uh, of emotions that they uh, brought out with their performance on television the groups of people from all over the world, parents, mostly parents, uh, and people who are involved with this world, um, are, s I don't think there was ever a group or individual or a group who brought out this level of dignity of people with this, for, you know, these people with, that have a disability. And it's a source of pride for all of us. And they're really ambassadors of change because it's not only for us, for people who grow up with this world. Yes, I'm a brother, I'm a sibling of, uh, a, I have a brother with a disability and, uh, you know, others who are connected to what I call our world. But it's really about all of us as society. They, they're making real soci societal change. They uh, manage to teach us all that, hey, Yes, don't look at the disability. These are musicians. They have a talent. They're amazing. It's not only the music they play, it's what they say. It's, you know, the interviews they give, how they come across. People fall in love with them and people see the beauty of people with disabilities. And that is really the greater mission here. It's not only the, it's, it's way, way larger than Shalva or even individuals wow. with disabilities. They're ambassadors for the world. They're ambassadors of real change in the world. And that is the most exciting thing. And, you know, 
this is something you can't plan. Right. Yes, we believed in their talent. We knew how amazing they are. But to ever dream, wow. <laughs> we dared to dream that, wow. you know, let's give them a shot and let's, let's show the world who they are. But when it happens and when it really becomes so big and on a level it's now, it's really quite humbling for all of us. And we're enjoying the journey. We're, you know, now, we can yeah. People are watching and they, they saying, we need to get involved in this. They can contact, uh, there's a, d d uh, I spoke before, there's a donate page. You, they can contact you and they can, you know, I think you take, you have, you, there's volunteer, you have a vol volunteers work there as well. Do they have special training? Uh, how does that work? When you go to Shalva, do you have to have uh, done special training or? To, we, to have, work with the, we have many volunteers, hundreds right. of volunteers who come and work with the kids. Of course, wow. of course, you know, we have 400 professionals and wow. it's a very large operation. But uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of volunteers who come. Some are uh, there on an ongoing base. Some come, uh, you know, when they visit Israel, come and join and help out and, uh, you know, become part of our beautiful world. Regarding, uh, you know, the financial place of Shalva, it's a non-for-profit. Uh, we do everything on a voluntarily base. Shalva services, it's an important statement to give that Shalva services all, Jewish, non-Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Jews, all colors, all walks of life. And we never, never differentiate between uh, uh, anyone who walks in our door. And we also service all free of charge. Wow. Meaning, if someone has the ability, we need that. Uh, we need, of course, the money to to operate. But uh, we never bring in a kid based on the family's ability to pay or not to pay. And most children don't pay for the services they receive at Chalva. It was our vow, and it wasn't easy uh, during the years. But we never looked back. And we knew that our mission is to be there for everyone. So ev you every dollar and right. every every a donation of every size right. is needed and uh, much appreciated. And I can only promise one thing. This partnership is a partnership of pride. And whoever partners with Shalva will be very proud of his partnership wow. with us. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Now, one of the things that I, I was fascinated about when I went to the center was that there's a butterfly. Um, as we close, maybe you can just tell us a bit about the butterfly. What, 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 why is that uh, so prevalent at uh, Shalvary? Indeed, it's in one of the videos show the butterfly. It was my mother's theme forever. And she uh, always saw in the butterfly the ability to fly. The ability to, you know, to take the cocoon, who, you know, uh, doesn't have much, doesn't has nothing, and uh, give him the right environment, provide him with what he needs, all the love and care, uh, all the therapies, the community around him, and eventually he will come out of his cocoon, and with his own wings, his own colors, fly to the best of his abilities. So as we were planning the new center, she saw the butterfly as the motif all through the center. Um, and that's, you know, that's the story of the butterfly at Chalva. It really symbolizes what we uh, try to do at Chalva. Wow. You know, wow, it's, uh, it, she always says, you can't cure a situation. You can't change it. It is what it is. But you could always make the best of every situation. And when you provide the right tools, the right environment, the love, the care, the, uh, the 360 around any given situation, chances is that they'll make it. They'll be just fine. You know, when a mother comes to Shalva, one of the programs my mother started at Shalva is a program called Me and My Mommy. It's a program she always knew she wants to give. It took time to launch it, and like 20 years ago, we started the program. Today, it's one of Shalva's cutting-edge programs where mothers come from all over Israel and from other countries. A mother comes to our center. She's not alone. When she's hit with a situation like this, that, one, that a child of her, that she gave birth to a child who's not well 
or discovering later in life when the child is a year old or two years old that he's not reaching his milestones and there is an issue, she's blown out of the water. Life is very dark and uh, really that mother, that family doesn't know what the next step is. When you create the right environment for her, when you bring her in and she meets other mothers, she meets top professionals and she's not alone. She's forced to get out of her, her loneliness, her depression. There is a chance that she'll go on in life. And it's not only about her child now, it's about her other children at home. Mm-hmm. It's about her husband, it's about her family. And that is really what Shalva is all about. We can't cure. It is what it is, but we could provide that shoulder to lean on and uh, that framework, that uh, environment for the family, for the child, so that he could make it, the family could go on and have a life, and life could go on and everybody could function. That's what Shalva is all about. A burden shared is a burden halved. When you walk into Shalva, you'll see on the wall, color my world with hope. And that's our slogan from day one. It's all about hope. If one has hope, life could go on. He has a chance. If there is no hope, right. there is no chance to stand anything. Well, th- th- thank you for the wonderful work you're doing, and we'll be right back after this. Shalom, dear friends. Wonderful to be with you today. We are going to look at some name, which is the animals, and the name is Chayot. And if you remember, uh, God was asking Adam to name the animals, and Adam did it. And when you look in Hebrew, the name is not just the name of an animal, but he has his function and his role in the name. So one is, the first one is dog, which is kelev. And kelev is like ke and lev. Ke is like like, and lev is your heart. The dog is like like my heart. And you know how we say that the dog is the best friend of a man. And there is another one, which is also very interesting, peel. And peel is elephant. Why is it peel? Because it comes from the verb poel, and the verb poel is doing. And we know that the elephant is so strong that he can do a lot of work and help the man. Now, there is another one, par par. I love that one. Par par is a butterfly. And one day I was looking, knowing that Adam gave the name, and like in Hebrew, there is a role. I was like, what is the name of Papa? What is the role inside of this name, Papa? So I look in the dictionary, and you have the name, the verb, peer pair. And the verb peer pair is struggling, is jerking, is like moving, and sometimes even to death, like, you know, vibrating, moving. And we can see is exactly the butterfly. The butterfly, first of all, is a larva, then he goes in a cocoon. And in this cocoon, he has to struggle to be a beautiful butterfly. If he wasn't struggling, the butterfly won't be good. You, you, you can't help the butterfly to get out because he will get damaged and he has to do it himself. So there is a time of struggling. And sometimes the same for us in our life. You can have like struggle in your life, but the struggle is good to go to another level. And you can see this butterfly who can fly for himself and he needs to go through the struggle. This is really beautiful when I find that. There is another one also that I love, is also Dror, and Dror is a sparrow. So he's the little bird, you know, who loves freedom. He loves to go around and he doesn't like to be in a cage. If you put a sparrow in a cage, he will die. And the name of freedom is also draw because is the sparrow loves to be free. Isn't it amazing? Now, there is two special names also for animals. Chayot, as we saw, which is, you can hear chai, life in it. So it's like the wild animals. And then you have behemoth, and behemoth is more the domestic animals, which is interesting to remember. Bet, do you remember, is a house. So is the animals that we have around the house, behemoth, and the wild animal is chayot. And we can learn so many beautiful about the animals. So we remember kelev is dog, pil is elephant, papa is the beautiful uh, butterfly, and Dho is the sparrow. We will learn again some beautiful names today, and we'll see you next week. Bye. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Avi, for coming across. Thank you, Martin. Telling us about the work of Shalva. Absolutely amazing. And you can go to their website. All the information is there. Uh, we love to receive your emails. Don't forget you can email us at info at israelfirst.org. Uh, visit the website www.israelfirst.org and remember we're the program that looks at the land, the people and the language. <laughs>